In this tutorial, I am going to use the Kelly Hamilton theorem to find the inverse of uh, the matrix A, which has elements 5, minus 1, 5, 0, 2, 0, minus 5, 3, minus 15. And the Kelly Hamilton theorem states that uh, every matrix is a zero of its characteristic polynomial. We denote the characteristic polynomial by Pn of lambda. So, what the Kelly Hamilton theorem is saying is uh, Pn of A is equal to zero where this zero here is uh, the zero matrix. By definition, the characteristic polynomial Pn of lambda is equal to the determinant of A minus lambda In, where the In there has the same size as uh, the given matrix. In this case, we are having our matrix is a 3 by 3, and therefore our In will be the identity 3 by 3 matrix there. And this identity matrix is being multiplied by lambda in the formula there, this will result in having lambdas on the diagonal. And we are subtracting a matrix which has lambdas on the diagonal from the matrix A. And this will result in subtracting lambda from the elements which are on the diagonal of uh, the matrix A there, the 5, 2, minus 15. So we def that our characteristic polynomial is the determinant of 5 minus lambda, minus 1, 5, 0, 2, minus lambda, 0, minus 5, 3, minus 15, minus lambda. We can evaluate that determinant uh, using the row or column with the most number of zeros. In this case, we see that row number 2 there is the most number of zeros. It has 2. So that's the row that I will use. And I will look at uh, that element that we have there, 2 minus lambda. And uh, look at the array of positive, negative, positive. So I will close the row and the column containing the 2 minus lambda. And noting that on the array of positive negative there, we have uh, the 2 minus lambda is corresponding to a positive sign. So what we have there, we would have the 2 minus lambda multiplied by the positive sign, so we would have 2 minus lambda. Then multiplied by the determinant of the uncovered elements. The uncovered elements there are 5 minus lambda 5 minus 5 minus 15 minus lambda. So we would have the determinant of 5 minus lambda 5 minus 5 minus 15 minus lambda. What we are having there is a determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. The determinant of the matrix A, B, C, D is A, D minus B, C. So using that formula there, the highlighted part will simplify to 2 minus lambda multiplied by 5 minus lambda multiplied by minus 15 minus lambda plus 25. I can then go on and expand this part and the result there will be minus lambda cubed minus 8 lambda squared plus 70 lambda minus 100. So what we are having there is the characteristic polynomial is minus lambda cubed minus 8 lambda squared plus 70 lambda minus 100. But from the Kelly Hamilton theorem we are saying that Pn of A is equals to 0. So we need to substitute A where we have that lambda in the characteristic polynomial. So I am going to substitute A where we have lambda in the characteristic polynomial and would have Pn of A is equals to minus A cubed minus 8A squared plus 70A minus 100. Now when you are looking at uh, the matrix A that we are given, this is a 3 by 3. So if we are having a 3 by 3 matrix and uh, we look at the A cubed there, A cubed it will be A times A times A. The result there is a 3 by 3 matrix. So that part I've highlighted is a 3 by 3 matrix. The A squared as well, since we are multiplying a 3 by 3 by 3 by 3, that part will be a 3 by 3 matrix as well. And this part here, it will be a 3 by 3. But if you look at this part, that's a constant. But we can only combine matrices, add or subtract matrices which are of the same size. So as it turns that equation there is inconsistent because we cannot combine matrices of different sizes, a matrix and a constant. So for us to make it consistent, we need to make that part there a 3 by 3 matrix. And we can do that by introducing the identity 3 by 3 matrix there. So it would be 100 multiplied by the identity 3 by 3 matrix. So our Pn of A will be minus A cubed minus 8A squared plus 70A minus 100 multiplied by the identity matrix. So we have our Pn of A is that 
but by the Kelly Hamilton theorem, we are saying that the PN of A there is equal to the zero matrix. So if we use that, the part that I've highlighted we would have minus A cubed minus 8A squared plus 70A minus 100I is equal to zero. Now looking at this part, the minus 100I, we can take it uh, on the other side of uh, the equality sign, then we would have 100i is equal to minus a cubed minus 8a squared plus 70a. I can then go on and uh, divide that equation by 100 so that I make i subject of the formula and would have uh, that the identity matrix there is equal to 1 over 100 multiplied by minus a cubed minus 8a squared plus 70a. What we want here in this case, we want a inverse. So we can multiply throughout there by a inverse. And when you multiply by A inverse, the identity matrix multiplied by A inverse, it gives us A inverse. The A cubed multiplied by A inverse, it gives us A squared. And the A squared multiplied by A inverse, it gives us the matrix A. And the matrix A multiplied by A inverse, it gives us the identity matrix. So our equation, when you multiply throughout by A inverse, it will give us A inverse is equal to 1 over 100 multiplied by minus A squared minus 8a plus 70i. So that's the expression for a inverse that we are having. We are having our matrix there, this 3 by 3, 5 minus 1, 5, 0, 2, 0, minus 5, 3, minus 15. In the formula which we are having for a inverse on the left there, we are having an a squared. a squared is a times a. We have our a, so by matrix multiplication, row by column, a times A will give us 0, 8, minus 50, 0, 4, 0, 50, minus 34, 200. So that's A squared. I will then go on and uh, substitute this A squared, the A and the identity matrix into the formula for A inverse, which is on top there. And we would have 1 over 100 multiplied by minus A squared minus 8 times A plus 70 times the identity matrix. I can then go on and simplify this part, combining matrices, addition and subtraction, and we have a multiplication by a scalar there. So we combine the matrices by adding or subtracting the corresponding elements. And when you simplify that highlighted part there, it will give us the matrix where we have 30, 0, 10, 0, 50, 0, minus 10, 10, minus 10. So that's the expression that we are having there. And I can now go on and look at this part here. We are multiplying that matrix by a scalar 1 over 100. So I can divide all the elements by 100 there. And the result that we get is the 3 by 3 matrix. That is elements 3 over 10, 0, 1 over 10, 0, 1 over 2, 0, minus 1 over 10, 1 over 10, minus 1 over 10. So what we are having there is for the given 3 by 3 matrix there, the inverse is the 3 by 3 matrix, which has elements 3 over 10, 0, 1 over 10, 0, 1 over 2, 0, minus 1 over 10, 1 over 10, minus 1 over 10. So that's the inverse using the Kelly-Hamilton theorem.